everybody. In this short video, we are going to have a peek into the wonderful and fascinating world of DNA. We know that all living things are made up of cells, just like a house is made up of bricks. We might wonder that if all living things are made up of cells, what is it that makes us unique? Let's understand this with an example. We all love cakes, don't we? Cakes are basically made up of flour, eggs, sugar, butter, baking powder. But yet we have so many different types of cakes. This is because each cake has each of these along with some other things added or deleted in different proportions. So it makes each cake unique. And recipes are definitely important to make an exact product. Likewise, in our body, cells are made up of a nucleus and the nucleus contains chromosomes wherein the DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid is tightly coiled. But each of us are unique because the DNA in each of us has a different recipe. DNA is a record of instructions telling the cell what its job is going to be. A good analogy for DNA as a whole is a set of blueprints for the cell or computer code telling a PC what to do. It is written in a special alphabet that has only four letters. Unlike a book or computer screen, DNA isn't flat and boring. It is a beautifully curved ladder. We call this shape a double helix. The DNA structure can be compared to that of a ladder. This model of the DNA was proposed by Watson and Crick in the year 1953. The letters of the DNA alphabet, called bases, make up the rungs. Special sugars and other atoms make up the handrail. The rungs are very special. Each one of these bases has a name, but they prefer to be called by their initials. A for adenine, T for thymine, C for cytosine, and G for guanine. They don't like to be by themselves, so always pair up with a friend. But they are very choosy about their friends. A and T are best friends and always hang out together. G and C are best friends too and always hang out together. Another way of looking at it is that A, T, G and C are like jigsaw pieces. A and T fit together. C and G fit together. You cannot force a jigsaw piece to fit in the wrong place. Look at these pictures. Do all of these have DNA? Well, the answer is yes. Plants, animals and humans have DNA. The DNA is what makes them who they are. Have you noticed that there are so many similarities between you and your parents or some of your close relatives? This is because you inherit your DNA from your parents and the DNA of both your parents combine to make a masterpiece and that is you. Well, we often might wonder, can DNA be separated or isolated from our cells? The answer is yes. Now let's do something interesting. I will now show you how you can isolate DNA from banana. This may sound difficult, but it is not difficult at all. We'll do it with ingredients that we find every day in our home. The steps in this procedure would include mashing, filtration, precipitation, as well as extraction. Here's what we will need to carry out this little experiment. One third cup of chopped banana, half a cup of water, a teaspoon of table salt, two teaspoons of dishwashing liquid, a bit of alcohol, here I'm going to use rubbing alcohol or surgical alcohol, preferably ice cold, a Ziploc bag, tissue paper in case of any spills, a kitchen mallet, if you don't have a kitchen mallet, you could very well use a rolling pin, a double filtration sieve, here there are two layers to ensure proper filtration, a teaspoon, a skewer, if you don't have a skewer, you could use a toothpick. I also have over here a wine glass, 
You could also use a tubular cylindrical glass, a tumbler which I am going to use to mix my solutions, measuring cups. To begin with, place the rubbing alcohol in the freezer compartment of your refrigerator for use at the end. Make a solution with half cup of water. One teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of dishwashing liquid. Stir this till it completely dissolves. Now, let's take one third cup of the fruit in the Ziploc bag. This fruit has been chopped. Ensure that there is no air in the bag, otherwise it would be difficult to squish through this fruit. Seal the bag completely. Push all the fruit to one end and start mashing with a mallet. As I said earlier, you could also use a rolling pin for this. This mashing has to be done completely. You could also use your fingers to squish it this way, but it's going to take a real long time. So it's better you use an instrument to do it. If you really want it done fast, you could also use a blender, but I prefer mechanical ways to do this. I have already done this and kept, so I'm going to use the one which has already been mashed prior to save time. Can you see that it's a perfect paste that I'm going to be using? There are no lumps in this. So this will be used for a further experiment. Now what am I going to do with this? To this, I'm going to add one fourth cup of the soap solution that we had already prepared and kept. So now let's add one fourth cup of this soap solution. this. This has to be mixed thoroughly and this paste has to get incorporated with the soap solution. Can you see that this paste is completely getting incorporated with the soap solution? With your hand you could just do this and keep mixing. And now you have a uniform solution. Now what I'm going to do with this is, I'm going to leave it stand like this for 10 to 20 minutes. While that is left to stand, let us see why we need to do all these steps. The DNA is present inside the cell and the mashing process helps in exposing a greater surface area from which to extract DNA. Now you might wonder, mashing is fine. But why did I add soap solution? Have you seen your mother using a warm soap solution to remove the grease from the vessels after cooking? For the very same reason, we use soap solution here. The cell membranes are made of a lipid layer or a fat layer and in order to expose the nucleus of the cell, these lipid layers need to be dissolved or disrupted. For this purpose, the soap solution is used. Now let's go back and check 
on what has happened to our banana mash. Though the DNA has been exposed in this um, mash, we cannot see it through this dense solution. This is because DNA is soluble in water. So what we are going to do is, we are going to first of all filter this solution. This um, has got a lot of this lumpy um, banana mash in it. So we don't want any particles or any coarse particles of the banana to remain in this. So the first step we'll go through is filtration. For this we are going to use this double sieve. And I'm going to pour this solution into this. solution without the lumps of the banana is getting filtered down into the glass kept below. Now here we have the filtrate after complete filtration and what you can see over here is where our DNA is present but DNA is soluble in water and since it's soluble in water we are unable to see it. So what do we do? I'll pour this into another glass now. As far as possible, I'll try to avoid bringing the froth in. Okay, so you can all see it over here that I have poured this filtrate into this glass. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pour some ice cold alcohol or rubbing alcohol, which I had kept in the refrigerator in the freezer compartment earlier. I'm taking that and I'm going to pour it slowly along the sides without disturbing the layer that is already there. Because DNA is insoluble in alcohol. I'm going to pour almost equivalent amount of um, the alcohol to what is there. As you can see, at the junction of those layers, there is a little bit of DNA that is isolated. This DNA can be spooled out with the help of a skewer. And what you see over here, this gooey substance is nothing but our threaded DNA. So now that I've spooled and showed you the DNA, we've just uh, let it settle down a bit. And now you can have a clearer view of those threaded strands of DNA that are seen in the alcohol layer. This is your banana DNA. You might wonder as to why DNA needs to be extracted. Human DNA, once extracted, is used for forensic purposes. Criminals have DNA with a specific recipe and this specific DNA can identify that particular criminal. We also see that this DNA is used for identifying parents, mother, father in case of disputes in terms of paternity testing or DNA testing. There are so many other uses for this DNA we've seen in genetic engineering and many other fields of genetics. I hope all of you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.